Fair warning, this is not how you should test a brand new wheel set. I don't want to ruin the wheel because I want to ride this wheel. I like it. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're excited for today. I know I am. Just got these in the mail. We're going to pop these open. We're going to install them on my trusty Ibis Ripmo V2S. I'm going to try them out on the trail and see how they do. There's some cool stuff going on with this wheel set, and I'm really curious how that affects the performance. Before we jump into everything, I want to give a big thanks to Jensen USA. I have their logo on my beanie somewhere up here. Uh, Jensen's a big supporter of my entire YouTube channel. In addition to that, they're one of the biggest, strongest, most leading online retailers in the United States of America for mountain bike parts and accessories, including Industry 9 wheels. I've got a link to the Industry 9 page at Jensen USA in the description down below. If you want to learn more about these wheels or the other wheels that Industry 9 offers, pop over to Jensen USA and then any purchases from Jensen will directly help support my channel and that's a big part of how we make all this happen. So big thanks to Jensen USA. Also, thanks to Industry 9, they supplied me these wheels and a headset free of charge. They've also been a big supporter of my channel over the years as well. With that said, let's try this stuff out and see how it works. I don't see this test, who else will? Oh. All right, I haven't even seen these wheels yet. I did pick out the colors, and I'm terrible at picking out colors. I wasn't sure what bike these would go on, so it was a shoot in the dark situation. Ooh, what's that? Oh, stems, awesome. Let's try those out. Here we go, first look at the new Industry 9 wheel set. the sweet music of the Hydra hub right there. These wheels are super special, brand new. I believe they're coming out today. I'm excited to ride these because they have a new technology up here at the bead wall. So these are a 30 millimeter inner rim width. It's a hookless design. And then this shelf right here, this shoulder is significantly wider than previous generations. Traditional wheels, this is a lot narrower and it creates more of a knife pointing up towards your tire. So when your tire bottoms out, it then is much more likely to pinch flat it and cut it right above the bead. Making this much wider brings it way down, more, much more of a blunt object. So at 90 degrees, you're far less likely to sever the tire at the cords right around the bead there. Now why is that? Mm, so wide that you need to wipe off your screen. <laughs> oh, four mil? What? That's four mils? Move your fingers. So the old was about two millimeters. Jeff from the future here. We just had to pull the rim tape off real quick. You'll find out why later in the video. We noticed this rim's asymmetric. There's an extra ridge with more material that's on the side that is less supported because of the dish of the wheel. When you're building a mountain bike wheel, you've got to dish it over to the drive side and back on the rear wheel. And up front, you got to dish it over to the, the actual disc brake side. It's about a two millimeter offset difference towards the side that needs the extra support that has the shoulder ridge. Pretty cool. I run either the Maxxis Double Down or the WTB Tough Casing. Let's weigh this ass guy. Oh, 1,379 grams. Let's try weighing this dissector. What is this way? Much lighter, 1187. And that's uh, DH casing. What? <laughs> that's awesome. The DH casing dissector is significantly lighter than the Double Down ass guy. Who knew? So anyhow, I'm carrying at least 400 extra grams of tire weight in order to keep everything more stout. And I do that because when I run like 23, 24 PSI, the tire holds its shape really well and it doesn't just deform when it hits things. All right, uh, let's throw this on my Ripmo and then uh, hopefully get out for a spin. Okay. Gripping footage of cassette install, right? This is what's gonna Get us those likes and shares and subscribes, huh? Throw a rotor on here. Install was normal, though I wasn't aware the rims were actually asymmetrical, so I think I put them on the wrong side first. Anyhow, I also tossed on the 40 millimeter Industry 9 stem, which after some riding, I'm quite liking. I think I should have tried that 40 millimeter length years ago. They look amazing. Let's go see how they ride on the trail. Ah! <laughs> 
Just as the mimosa will get people out of bed before nine on a weekend, it was time to go hit one of my favorite local trails despite a ton of wind and a bit of rain. This is the first ride on the new EN 300s. Sometimes I forget how much I like riding this bike. This is like old faithful for me. Previously, I was riding the Industry 9 Enduro 315C carbon wheels on here. Those 315C carbon wheels I normally use also have about a four millimeter wide bead wall profile as well. Maybe that explains why I don't already have any kind of issues with excessive flat tires. Wheel stiffness feels really good. Sometimes going from carbon to aluminum, you notice the aluminum is just a little bit softer. In this case, the aluminum's it's pretty stout. I like it, it feels really good. Stiffness of the old Enduro 305 wheels was totally acceptable. I ran those for years and quite liked them. However, I will say the new Enduro 300s do feel a bit stiffer. I wonder if that comes from the increase in size from the bead wall. The DH casing rear tire is gnarly. Um, I'm not really feeling much rear tire squirm. I've backed down a little bit in tire pressure. I'm probably at like 20 and back. So yeah, we'll keep running through this. This trail is pretty jumpy and poppy. So we may see some deformation, we might not. I have zero expectations that we'll have any flat tires today. Same as if we had regular wheels and tires because DH casing and double down casings are pretty stout as it is. But it'll be interesting to see if we do get any fold over. Now, while you can't see the deformation in these turns here, you can indeed see this very obvious example. No flat tire though. It's half the fun of these videos is riding the bikes anyhow. I don't know if you guys are aware, but I really like to do wheelies and sometimes I do them without pedaling, which people call a manual, but to me, they're all wheelies because they're all on one wheel. And uh, there's a few spots on this trail where I like to throw them in. It's just a little Yew! bit of extra spice on top. So there's a quick little root bump jump to manual. Sometimes my tire can hit rim bouncing off that root. It did not today. It would have been great. It would have been cool to show you all. We didn't get a flat tire and we fully deformed the tire, but DH casing. And then over here, there's another really long manual line that I've never got the whole thing on, but I'm on this Ripmo and I really like this bike. It's been a hot minute since I last rode it. Oh my gosh, it's manualing good today. One important thing about doing a long wheelie or manual, the hardest part of a long, of any kind of wheelie or manual is not balancing your tilt fore aft, it's going in a straight line. And from what I've found from over 25 years of wheelies is that the squarer and wider your back tire, the easier it's gonna be to ride that long wheelie. I noticed that this 2.4 dissector is not the world's best back tire for long wheelies. It's okay, but it's a little more rounded than the DHR2. So I've been struggling on some of my bikes to do long wheelies with this tire, but today with this new wheel set, things are working out really well. So I don't know if that's the extra support from the bigger casing tire, if that's the new rim design or what, but the new rim is certainly not hurting in any shape or form. And I am super pumped because that manual right there, I've been wanting to just nail that thing. And then this next one, I struggled to film that last year. This year, first try, second try, third try, all of them are just like exactly what I was hoping for. That was really fun. I like doing things like that. With no pinch flats on the trail, we're gonna have to head home and try an experiment to see if we can actually create a pinch flat situation. Uh, I don't wanna ruin the wheel because I wanna ride this wheel. I like it. It's plenty light. It's more than stiff enough. I'm a fan of this thing. It feels good. Let's catch up again uh, another day and we'll see what happens. We'll play around a little bit. Eww. We watched back some of the footage from yesterday and sure enough, uh, the downhill casing rear tire was deforming quite a bit on roots and even a little bit in like turns and high impact scenarios. So today we're gonna push the limits a little bit more. We're gonna find out just what we can get away with with the new rim design. So I have an idea. I don't know how well this is gonna work. There is a chance we might have wrecked everything with this test, but the idea was basically scientifically impact the daylights out of this rear wheel. And so to be as scientific as possible, I think we're gonna try to use a railroad track. And I have this little jump over here. I taught my daughter how to jump. It's just a step up, fly out, jump to flat, real mellow. We're gonna ramp that volume up as high as we safely can, and then a little bit more probably. And we're gonna see what we can get away with with rear tires. Yeah, if I can land rear wheel first on railroad track from like a good four or five feet high, wham! That'll definitely let us know how legit this design is. Let's go ahead and smash some wheels, tires, and maybe uh, if I do break this rim, hopefully Industry 9 can hook me up with a freshie. <laughs> but I'm hoping that doesn't happen because I'm stoked on how good this all rode yesterday. So a railroad tie is probably gonna go somewhere around there. Ooh, it's gotta face into the impact. 
and then we'll land right on that sharp edge of the railroad tie. So this is my bunny hop machine that I built six feet tall for a Patreon video on how to jump found trail gaps. I think it's gonna be a great way to scientifically determine if we're going high enough for this test to be bonafide. Let's grab the launch ramp. I feel like this is something Kurt Voorhees would be doing. Dude, that's gnarly, wow. Let's practice without the accoutrements because that's gonna be a moon boot. All right, trying to get a helmet. See if we can get some height. This is like somewhat turnkey. I've got the uh, bunny hop machine set at four feet of height and then uh, we'll keep feeling this out. It'd be cool to get even higher. Oh. That's, a, that's a high jump. I'll throw out the bonsai kicker too so we can get a little more pepper into this. Let's do one more tester and then railroad tie. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that is brutal on the front wheel. It's so hard to land rear wheel first and softly when you huck like that. <laughs> we have the scene set for our scientific test. Uh, we raked out the landing zone and then I've got the stick set to four feet high. Generally, I'm quite a bit over the stick, um, but it's repeatable now. And then we need to know tire pressure. I still have the downhill casing rear tire on here. And this is the same pressure I was riding in all like the trail riding shots from the other day. 22 PSI with DH casing. That's a pretty firm back tire right there. Let's find out what happens. All right, you good? Here we go. You. We flatted. How did it flat? The rim tape. It's coming out from that spoke. That spoke's all loose now. So I think we bent the wheel a little bit right here, but the tire did not go flat. I don't think we have an actual pinch right there. Oh, I can see to the spokes. So I think the, the rim bent down enough that the spokes poked through the rim tape. But you know what's good? The tire does not show any evidence of the sidewall getting destroyed. So that's good. We'll go assess the damage and see if this test can continue with some more taping or what. Let's find out basically what happened. I just popped up here in the shop. We're gonna pull the tire off and get a better look at the destruction. You're never on the trail, unless you're riding in Santa Cruz, going to case a jump onto a railroad tie. So I feel a little bad doing that as a test, but if I don't do this test, who else will? That's not bad. That's really not bad at all. So that's why the tire went flat. It's because the spoke popped through and that popped through because the rim had to flex with that big impact. Now we'll have to pull the rim tape off and see if it actually broke the rim right here. It feels very firm still. We also have tears in the rim tape on that spoke and that spoke. Let's grab the trimming stand and see uh, how out of shape this thing is. So it's really quite true still. It's, it's out by like a millimeter. If you look at the right side here, it's only off by a tiny little bit. And that was a big hit. That's pretty cool. This is a strong wheel. It's a very strong wheel. Now I think the big question is, what's it like underneath the rim tape? Everyone give us a little privacy. We're gonna get this rim undressed. It's okay, it's the doctor's office. Gonna make this rim all better. That is satisfying. Oh, it's not bad at all. Cool. Maybe I'll keep riding this rim for time to come. Um, so you can see we had, that's where the railroad track met the rim right here. The outside got bowed out a little bit, but the inside's not really deformed bad at all. Our spoke tension's a little bit under on that guy. Let's assume somewhere between 25 and 30. Uh, 11. So that spoke's now super loose. Total damage is basically one loose spoke and a new rim tape. That seems acceptable. Oh, I see uh, air coming around the rim tape. It looks like the tire bead is not getting enough force with the air to slide it over into the little pocket it needs to sit in, the little corner to lock in. So let the compressor charge up, we'll hit it again. 
There is a chance we might have wrecked everything with this test. I fully think we're gonna get this wheel to work again. I might need to get wider rim tape. The new wheels are supposed to be strong and not pinch flat your tire. So far they're strong. They didn't flat landing on a railroad tie and they did not pinch my Maxxis downhill casing tire. So uh, we'll be back in a minute, we'll try this again. I just threw a little more rim tape on here. We're gonna try to reinflate and hopefully this tire mounts back up on this smacked wheel. Let's see. Oh, oh. Oh, I think we may be in business. I think the obvious next thing to do is to go ahead and jump again without the railroad tie. <laughs> oh, hi tree. I think that wheel's gonna work pretty good. Let's try it a little more. That was a tall jump. Oh, doesn't count. <laughs> it's right there. No leakage, no problems. I fully intend to ride this wheel for quite some time, so I took it over to the rut track and found out how it would corner in some high impact scenarios with the new tape job I did. Check it out. It doesn't appear any air has leaked out. I'd call this a smashing success. Pun fully intended. You're welcome. Well, there we go. The new technology works pretty good. Obviously, you're not gonna buy one of these and send it five feet to flat on a railroad tie. If you do, it's recoverable. I'm pretty impressed this wheel held up to that initial impact onto the railroad tie. That was asking a lot for a lightweight rim. I think these rims are really, really cool. It's advanced technology, it's aluminum. Sure, there's definitely less expensive options out there, but for someone that wants a high-end option, especially for a race bike wheel set, this is a really good setup. Um, you'll often find that top enduro racers prefer aluminum rims over carbon, and that's because if they do have a big hit like we had here, it won't shatter the rim into pieces and they can keep going and finish their race. Worst case scenario, throw an inner tube on it. A lot of racers run aluminum rims. I totally get it and understand. They're more repairable than a lot of the carbon rims too. So this makes a lot of sense. If you wanna learn more about these wheels, I've got a link in the description below because over to Jensen USA, over at the Jensen site, you can read all about the various Industry 9 options. Big thanks to Industry 9 for hooking me up with these wheels. Huge thanks to Jensen for sponsoring this content. And thanks to all of you for hanging out and watching this. Scroll down, hit me that subscribe button real quick. Thanks in advance. I'll see you guys in the comments. Thanks again, everyone. Peace. Oh. Mm. Oof. People often wonder why I have issues with headset durability. <laughs>